In this segment, we will discuss the inventory management policy uh, with probabilistic de demand through periodic review uh, method. That is, we always aim to order up to certain level of inventory uh, M whenever T days or T weeks uh, is up. So we will not care, we will not know, and neither can we know sometimes uh, the level of inventory in our warehouse or wherever we store them. We cannot know, we don't know, we don't want to know. For whatever reasons, we have no idea about the inventory level. Only after T uh, days or weeks and sometimes months of um, time lapse do we go to the uh, warehouse we don't have to do that physically but but the idea is that do we go there and check out and then finally realize what is our inventory level okay that might sound strange but that is to be contrasted with um we vary our time duration between uh the the reorder so uh, every time we order we order fixed quantity but we meet changing demand by varying the time of ordering. So that's called the continuous review and that tends to be more expensive in setup. The periodic review says uh, every fixed interval, T days, we will go to our warehouse, know our inventory level um, and of course do the reordering and after that when we walk out of our warehouse we have no idea or we don't care or we cannot care about the inventory level again right so we just hope for the best yeah so uh, i'm not saying that we cannot or we don't have the money or we uh, don't want to it's it's dependent on the situation right so um what this theory allows us to do is to mimic to a certain extent uh what some traders do that is we only check our stock right uh every week for example some uh, smaller scale uh, grocery stores run by owners themselves they might choose to um, not have sophisticated barcode scanner and all those set up uh, because their inventory level is small scale to begin with compared with big supermarkets right so what they do is if it's out of stock it's out of stock uh, ever tried this experience before we go to a grocery store somewhere in some countries and you say, I'm sorry, uh, mister, do you still have that um, brand of toothpaste? He says, everything is there on the shelf. If it's not there, we are out. And so, if you're out, and then what? Well, we are out, we are out, right? Go to the next store. So, they don't care, they don't have the knowledge, the know-how, the investment to care, to know about the stock level, so as to be able to order in advance as the stock level is dwindling. Uh, let's quickly order so that we always have that that brand of uh, toothpaste or whatever it is that they are selling, right? So, uh, and and I think the, the experience is quite common and therefore it is quite a uh, applicable policy in real life, even though it may sound a little bit strange uh, on theory, but we therefore have to look into what it means in terms of the dynamics of the variables and also the cost. Okay, so let's look at uh, what we have here. So, to begin with, periodic review uh, is also called order up to, and the name comes from the fact that when we visit our inventory uh, warehouse, we get to know uh, finally what's the level of, for example, tires that we have. We count them physically and then we realize that, oh, we are short or we are long in some sense. Are we having still a lot left or are we having not much left? Or actually, we are already having stock out and we didn't know about that, right? So, uh, how many do we order? And that cal that calculation will come from a predetermined fixed quantity that we subtract from with our present level of inventory. We'll talk a little bit more about that, right? So we have that uh, aim, that target, and that target, that aim uh, quantity is called our order up to quantity. 
So periodic review emphasizes more the time, order up to emphasizes more the inventory level, but they refer to the same thing. So inventory level, inventory position, how many tires do we have in our warehouse is only known every T uh, time units. Quick example, I'm selling tires in um, Jakarta, Indonesia. I have a warehouse there and I really have no idea, you know, how the demand is. Uh, every month I fly down there and I will then count the number of tires left. Right? If it's stock out, it's stock out. That's not bad. I, I'm having good, good business, right? Uh, if there are still a lot of tires left, then I order lesser because it seems like uh, the previous month tire wasn't selling. So maybe I shouldn't uh, purchase so many uh, for, for, for the next round. So uh, I will count and I will call my supplier and order um, X number of tires, Q number of tires. And that Q, that calculation of the Q, the order quantity, is to be done by subtracting from a predetermined uh, constant number of tires with our current inventory level. Right? So if we are left with a lot, then that fixed quantity minus that a lot of leftover tires, we are not going to order too many. But if we are left with little, then we order a lot to make up, to aim towards that uh, predetermined constant. Okay. So order the needed stock at a review point every T days, every one month, for example, then we will raise it, attempt to raise it to replenishment level M. Quick contrast that I've been, uh, you know, trying to emphasize. Um, continuous review, we know the stock level all the time. Periodic review, we have no idea <laughs> all the time until the review uh, point is up. Uh, continuous review, we have to continuously monitor the inventory and therefore incur setup costs in terms of the infrastructure, barcode reader, scanner, computer systems. Periodic review, as I said, I run the warehouse in maybe remote uh, parts of um, Vietnam, for example. And uh, it's not like I can go there easily. I, I visit, I fly frequently, but that's every month, right? So what about the day-to-day -day affairs? I have no idea. And I can keep it simple because I can't know uh, my as well. I don't need to know, right? So uh, periodic review, very attractive in terms of having low uh, cost to set up the infrastructure. Continuous review, theoretically, emphasizes fixed order quantity, but vary the time to order by having the re reorder point uh, as the trigger event, right? And periodic review, time to order is always the same. Every T days, every T months, every T weeks. Except the quantity to order, every time we speak to the supplier, we order different quantities, okay? Now this graph is interesting uh, because it, it reflects basically uh, what's going on. So let's kind of start at uh, a particular cycle here, right? So we leave our inventory, leave our warehouse, all right? And and of course, the warehouse starts to meet demand and therefore has dwindling uh, inventory level like this, all right? And uh, somewhere through the previously ordered uh, inventory arrives, so we, has a, we have a surge in inventory level and then we begin to uh, sell and sell and sell and meet demand and so on. And in the meantime, the T days, all right, has lapsed at this particular juncture. And so we enter our warehouse and started to count the number of tires in the warehouse. So one, two, three, four, five, we counted um, I2 number of tires here. Okay, so if for example, for the sake of uh, numerical analogy, suppose M is uh, 200, okay? And we counted in I2, um, what should it be? 90, all right? So if that's the case, if that's the case, what is our order quantity for this particular cycle? Uh, well, it will have to be, uh, Q2 is given by, 200 
minus 90, that's 110. So as to aim towards meeting the uh, predetermined quantity 200. Reason why we say aim to be and, and doesn't sound like we are meeting it is that once we make the phone call, we order 110 tires, right? At this juncture, we leave the warehouse. So you see, it's very efficient. We have no idea of the inventory level. We visit the warehouse, counted everything, make the order, maybe drink a cup of coffee, and then leave. And then we kind of don't care, cannot care about the inventory level again. In the meantime, supplier will start to deliver our ordered quantity of 110 tires. They will take L days, which is a fixed constant. L days later, supposedly our inventory will continue to sell right and sell in a kind of uh, although it's unpredictable right because it's random it's kind of uh, not surprising it doesn't have extremes like the next day suddenly a customer came and clear out your whole inventory that might happen but it shouldn't be the norm right so kind of in a non-exciting manner we kind of uh, jiggle our way down towards the zero level but because it takes L days to deliver and it's pretty constant. Uh, after L days, we get another search in inventory. So we take the we receive the order and then start selling again. And then the T cycles, the T days will will repeat itself. And at that point in time, we visit our inventory warehouse and count the number of stock. And this time round it is I3 and as you might imagine, I3 would not be the same as I2. So let's say that is going to be different and we are going to uh, write a different number for that. So this time round, we are left with a little bit more and suppose we have 120 left. Okay, So our quantity Q3 in the third cycle will not be the same as before. This time round, it will be uh, equal to Q3 will be equal to 200 minus 120 that will give us 80 tires so for the third cycle we will order 80 tires instead of the previous cycle 110 tires can you see that 